Well, good morning, everybody. I am the bald guy, and I'm so thankful you have joined me for part five in our discussion into Cain. That's right. We are still looking into Cain's life. That's right. So let's get into this thing here. If you remember last time that Cain had killed his brother, he's walking back down the road, you know, he's figuring, oh, Abel, he'll be found, you know, ripped to pieces by animals. I'm fine. I'm cool. Everything's going to be fine. I'm still the head of the household. Everything's great. Probably water mechable, smile on his face like, mm -hmm. and then, boom, God shows up right in front of him. Cain freaks out, hits his knees, like, what? What? What did I do? And God says, yeah, that's right. What did you do? What did you do? Tell me. I want to know right now. I want to hear it from you. What did you do? Did Cain repent? No. Where's your brother? You went with him. You're coming back without him. Where is he? I don't know. I'm my brother's keeper. And we learned that, yeah, he was. And yes, we are. That was our lesson from last time. Now we continue on with this. God says, basically, he still hasn't repented yet. He hasn't told him. So, what have you done? I hear your brother's blood, man. It's crying to me. Okay? Your brother is literally crying to me. What have you done? So, what does he say? What does King say to that? I didn't do anything. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Still in denial. Still focusing in on himself. And God says, all right, enough, enough. I, I'm done. Okay. I know what you did. Remember what I told you was going to happen if you went through with what you were thinking about doing. And sure enough, you did it. All right, King. Here we go, buddy. I'm taking away the one thing you love more than me. The ability to farm. When you try to farm from now on, nothing's going to produce for you, my friend. Nothing. Okay. Now, if you want to put this into context a little bit, think of you being an all-star quarterback. You're making millions of dollars. You're in the prime of your life. You get hit wrong. You hurt your back. You can never play again. This is all you knew how to do since you were in grade school was to play quarterback. You've studied. You've done everything. You knew it back and forwards. Now you can't do it anymore. It's been taken away. Whoa. Yeah. Well, this is what Cain felt like. He's like, whoa, wait, whoa, 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 what? And God's like, yeah, you love that more than you love me. This was all you cared about. Okay? It showed in everything you did from the offering up to what you just done. Now, God still hasn't come out and said, Cain, you killed your brother. He's waiting for him to still confess it. And he's still in denial. He is on his knees in front of Jesus saying, no, 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 no. Then God says, wait a minute, I'm not done yet. Okay, your little plan that you're going to be head of the household because of what you did, that ain't going to happen either. Someone else is going to take your place, just like I told you. I'm sending you and your family away. You're going to be going to a land, fugitive and a vagabond. You're going to be for the rest of your life. Okay? You're going to be a wanderer. Okay, I'm going to send you to a certain place. Now, my next video, we're going to discuss this place a little bit better. Kind of get into the history of that, where he actually kind of settled in and did things and why he did things there. But that's what God's telling him. It's like, you're... You know, you and your family are gone. And he's like, then he comes back with the me thing again. It's incredible. He's like, God, this, no, no, this is more than I can bear. People are going to find out what I did. They, they, they're going to, they're going to want to kill me. Word's going to spread. No, no, they're going to, they're going to take away everything I have. My wife, my family, everything. I, 
I can't, no, this is, he was afraid. He was afraid for his life and he was afraid for himself. You know, you gotta think, did he really actually care for his wife and his family and his stuff? You know, honestly, I, I don't think so. You know, by the way he talks, he's all concerned about himself. That's right, himself. Somebody's gonna kill me. They're gonna take away my stuff. Come on. But that's what he says. And God comes back. And here's our loving God again, folks. It's the same God, New Testament and Old Testament. And here's another proof of it. God's like, Cain, 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 relax. This is what I'm going to do for you. Okay? You still have a part in my plan. And I'm going to put a mark on you. And nobody can touch you. And if somebody does, I'm going to put that revenge on what they did on you seven times. Seven times. Low relief? Still not. Cain's still like... <laughs> you, want, you want me to go away? Just go away? God's like, yeah, it's time for you to go. What was this mark, by the way? Well, no one really knows. No. You know, was it a scar? Was it something else? No one really knows, but it was identifiable. It was so identifiable that if you came across Cain, you would know right off the bat. It was something very visible and you could see it from the neck up. So that mark had to be on the face, whether it was a, a cut or something that was very, very identifiable as belonging to God. God is saying, you still belong to me. Nobody's going to touch you. So he put this on his face. And personally, what I'm thinking it was, since nobody really knows, is I'm thinking it was a word. It was God's word. It's like, he's still mine. Or a do not touch. Written in Hebrew, so people would understand it. Uh, that's my personal opinion is that God had placed this on him as that symbol of saying you're still mine and that everybody would know it that's what I think so we're going to come to the conclusion of this remember Cain is still focused only on about me okay he goes back and God basically tells him, go now, okay? You have to leave now. So he takes his family and departs. Doesn't say anything to anybody, just packs up and leaves. I'm sure his family's like, what are you doing? Where are we going? He didn't tell him anything. He was about to ready to confess to what he'd done. I'm sure they're gonna find out, but later, so he packs up and he just leaves, leaving everyone dumbfounded at the time. And then the word gets around that he did what he did. And that's what he was afraid of. Once that word got around that somebody was going to take revenge for Abel's death, maybe his son, and they were going to come after him. But God protected him because he still loves him. So, what do we get from this part of the story? God's love, folks, and that me. You know, do we do the same thing? Are we that king? If we do something wrong in God's eyes, do we get scared and focus in all about me? This punishment is too great that I can bear. You know, or, or, or do we, like, accept it? Just... You know, whatever comes, comes because was it my sin? Was it because somebody else? You know, was it a disease? I mean, honestly, folks, does it matter? This is this is my point. This is my point. 
we need to stop focusing and stop focusing in on the whys and the me's and why did this happen to me? I mean, yeah, it's hard, you know, especially if you deal with the death, especially if you deal with something that's tragic, um, something that takes away all your property, takes away everything you have, you know, God's good folks. And whatever the reason is, we'll find out eventually. And we need to stop focusing in on that me and the wise. Uh, you know, if you don't know, it's okay. All right, believe me, I've been there and I'm still there. And sometimes I do ask. I don't think there's nothing wrong with asking God why. Okay, but don't make it all about you. Don't make it that you've done something. Don't make it that you know, this is too much for you because God's never going to do that to you, folks, okay? Everything is done. It's done for his glory. And we've seen that. I mean, we see that all the way from the beginning. It's done for his glory. Everything is focusing in on Jesus' coming to earth. And this whole story gets into that through Cain, who made the Canaanites all the way down, okay, to Abraham, who has the Israelites. These two have problems their whole lives, because of this. So everything has a reason for what happens. We may not know it. We may not understand. Cain didn't understand it. I'm sure Adam and Eve didn't understand why it all happened. But the trust in God needs to be there, folks. That's what I'm telling you. It's hard. And we want to scream. We want to holler. We want to blame. But in the end... Once you really think about it, you know, my advice, and, you know, this is the hard advice of all. This is the hardest thing of all, is that we just have to accept. Sometimes we have to just accept, folks. I mean, it's not easy. And we may not think it's fair. We might not think it's right. But, folks, we just have to accept the things that... We don't understand. Mm -hmm. And if we know we've done something wrong and God's going to punish us for it, I think we have to accept it too. Admit our guilt to him. God separates our sin as far as the east from the west, folks. Is there consequences for what we do? Yes. Each and everything you do has a consequence somewhere down the line. Okay. And we have to accept that and live with it. We've done it. We're going to have to live with it. I mean, we have no choice in that. So this is my conclusion is that some things we can't understand, some things we won't. Okay. But the one thing that we have to come out of this is that our sin has a consequence. God will forgive you. He will love you no matter what. And when you ask for forgiveness and repent, guess what, folks? He's, he's forgotten. If you bring it up to him again, that same sin, he's going to be like, what? What are you talking about? And why he says that? It's because it's gone. It's gone. I mean, he doesn't remember it anymore. I mean, praise God for that, folks. Okay? But there's still repercussions of what you did. If you hurt somebody, you know, later on, that's going to come back on you. I mean, that's just the price we pay for the sin. Not that God does anything that punish you itself for the sin. Not once you're forgiven. I mean, come on, folks. I mean, yeah, life is hard. I mean, it is. But basic end of this is that you're forgiven. Okay, you're forgiven. Your sins are forgiven if you just ask him, okay? Come to him. Accept the things that we cannot change, folks. We have to accept it. All right. So, I'm the bald guy. I hope you enjoyed this video. And now we're going to discuss where Cain actually settled down into. What's that whole story behind this land? 
Well, I'm not going to ruin the surprises, and I will see you next video where we will discuss that a little bit better. I am the ball guy. I am out of here. I hope you have an amazing day. Forgive, forget. Be at peace, folks. God's got your back. Love you. Out of here.